Hi everybody, this is Kefren, your favorite French Canadian. Today I'm going to show you how to boost your FPS in Battlefield 6, the open beta. We're going to start by optimizing Windows, and after that we're going to take a look on your NVIDIA and Radiant parameter. And at the end, we will go inside of the game. So now for Windows, we're going to start by writing settings. And we're going to go to the settings of Windows 11. We're going to start by gaming over there. So the first one is game bar. This one I really recommend to deactivate it. It's causing issue and also you're losing some FPS with it. Except if you have a Ryzen uh, CPU, the 7900X 3D or the 7950X 3D, they're using uh, the game bar uh, to prioritize your CCD when you're playing video games. So super important to use that if you have those processors. If you have any other processor, just deactivate it. After that, we're going to go to graphic. We're going to change default graphic setting over there. Make sure that your hardware accelerated GPU scheduling is at on. Super important to do that. We're going to go to gaming again. Capture, capture. Make sure that everything is deactivated like this. So uh, you want to save all your resources. And the last one is game mode. Now game mode, honestly, is really, really good. Back then with Windows 10, it was a bit sketchy and a lot of like stuttering issue. But now you really need to using it uh, to make sure that all your resources are pri prioritizing your video games. Another thing that I recommend, we're going to go to system is your power. Uh, back then, uh, we were recommending to use the best performance, but now honestly just use balance you will have better boost clock longer boost clock uh, i did a couple of benchmark balance versus per best performance and honestly i'm getting better result with balance so super important to do that another thing uh, i want to mention is some recommendations so make sure that your uh, xmp profile is activated if you have it on your bios super important Make sure that you download the latest uh, chipset driver for your cpu if you have an amd or intel also, make sure that you update your BIOS to make sure that you have all the latest updates from your uh, CPU or your uh, uh, motherboard provider. Make sure that you have your Windows update up to date. And the last one is also make sure that you have the latest driver from your GPU. So if you have an NVIDIA card, Radeon or Intel, super important. They always push new update and they optimize a lot of stuff in it. So for NVIDIA, in your global setting, uh, first of all, your low latency mode, make sure this one is at on. Max frame rate, I always lock my frame rate at 237 because I have a 240 hertz monitor. Uh, so you don't want more FPS than the maximum hertz of your monitor because you're going to lose your G-Sync. And it's pretty much the same concept if you have a free sync monitor. So uh, yeah, th that's why. So for example, if you have a 144 hertz monitor, make sure that you lock your FPS like at 141 to make sure that you're not, you're not going to excess it. After that, the shader cache side, uh, this one by default, normally it's five gig. I really recommend to add a little bit more if you install a lot of different game on your PC. If you have the space, go with 100 like me or just go with 10 gig. Uh, you, you're going to make sure that you're not, not recompiling always your shader cache. It, sometimes you can curve, sometimes you can have like stuttering when you're playing a game. So this one is kind of important. In display mode, I really recommend to activate your G-Sync if it's available to you. Also, if you can use your free sync if you have a Radeon car or another monitor compatible with G-Sync. Make sure also that it's activated on your monitors. So you have to activate on the monitor and in the software with there. Display properties, this one refresh rate, super important to use the maximum one. I know a lot of people is buying a high refresh rate monitor, but Windows by default put 60. So super important to do that and make sure that you're playing native for your resolution. For color, if you have a, a monitor compatible with HDR, normally here uh, you should have 10 bit color, put your full dynamic range. And for a game like uh, Battlefield, I like to put my dig digital vibrance at 55. By default, it's 50. Uh, it's going to add more saturation, so it's easier to see your enemy. The game is a little bit less gray. And one more thing for the performance tab, I like to put my power maximum at 133%. Uh, percent. It's not um, an overclock, you're just pushing more watt to your um, your card. I can like have a longer boost clock. So uh, for an example, um, normally I get 5 to 7% boost in my games and also in 3D Mark. But this one is really depend on the uh, NVIDIA algorithm. If you have pretty much bad thermals you don't have the space on your gpu it will not do anything but if you have a good gpu you have like 62 degrees when you're playing your game and stuff uh you will see that your boost clock can be a little bit longer and stuff like that it helps a little bit with your fps so now let's go with the radiant settings 
So now for Radiant card, we're going to go to settings, display first. Make sure that you're using your free sync. If you have a monitor compatible with it, you're going to make sure that you're going to synchronize your GPU with your monitor. So really important to use that. After that, we're going to go to gaming in the graphics section. Make sure that you're using the custom profile. So don't use those presets over there. Make sure that you're selecting your GPU. In my case, it's a 9070 XT. Don't use your integrate GPU. It can be tricky if you're playing on a laptop or even a desktop like me that has an integrate GPU. After that, the first one that you will need to look at is your uh, FSR 4 that you can force in some game that it's uh, using FSR 3. This one, uh, it's not necessarily everybody will have it. It really depends if your card is compatible with it. So definitely enable it if you have it. Also, I want to mention if you're playing in a game that uh, doesn't have FSR, doesn't have frame generation and you're struggling with your FPS, Fluent Motion Frame can be a nice uh, option over there. You activate it, you're going to get like 30 to 30% boost. It will add input lag, so don't use that if you're playing a competitive game. But this one can help with an uh, older game. Uh, don't use Anti-Lag 1, this one is not good. Don't use a Radiant Boost. Radiant Chill, I really recommend to use it. And I will explain you why. So for an example, in my case right now, I have a 170 Hertz monitor. And to stay in your free sync range, you need to be, uh, you need to produce less than 170 FPS. So my recommendation is take your amount of Hertz on your uh, monitor. In my case, it's 170. Do minus three and lock your FPS at 167. You can do the same thing if you have a 240 Hertz monitor. Go with 30, uh, 237. Uh, so you're always going to make sure that you stay in your free sync range. It's better for uh, the fluidity of your image. And also, really important, if you want less input lag, you need to make sure that your GPU is not at 100% utilization. So uh, 98, 97, something like that. So sometimes it's good to just lock your FPS. Again, it depends on the game. Maybe in some game, 160 F 67 FPS will be 100% uh, utilization for me. So you can go maybe a little bit lower. You can also do it per game. Right now in the graphics section, I'm doing it for all my games on my computer. But sometimes, I don't know, you're playing the new Assassin's Creed. Just go to Assassin's Creed and you can lock your FPS over there if you want. So really important to do that for your uh, utilization, but also to make sure that you're staying in your free sync range. Another thing that I want to mention, image sharpening too can be nice if you don't add FSR in game or a sharpness slider. Uh, so if you're playing an old game or a game that just have like TAA and the game is very blurry, activate this and move your slider between something 60 to 70% depending on your preference. And it will really help to have a better image quality. Last thing that I want to mention, if you have some random stuttering and you don't know why, this option at the end can be really nice. It resets your shader cache, so you just perform a reset. And after that, when you will reopen your game, it will just rebuild your shader. Sometimes it can take time, so don't go too crazy if your game is lagging, but uh, it can help. I, I saw a lot of person uh, having this issue with Call of Duty. So this one can really help you. So this is pretty much it, guys. Make sure that you have the latest uh, version of your driver. And I also have a dedicated drive on uh, how to overclock your GPU. For me, it gives me 12% boost in my FPS without too much effort. So you can definitely look at my guide. So now let's go in the game. So just before going inside of the game, and by the way, I have a dedicated video for this. If you don't know DLSS Swapper, I like to use that for my games. So for Battlefield, by default, uh, I think they're using the 310.2.1. Uh, uh, so it's not the latest version from DLSS 4 from NVIDIA. So that's why I'm pushing uh, the latest one. And also really important for people who have a Radiant card and want to use FSR, I really recommend to use the latest version of XESS from Intel. This one, this one is the new version, the 2.1. Uh, I know it's confusing. They call it 2.0.2, but it, you have to use this one to, to have the proper proper XESS 2.1, you swap it. Because right now, the thing is, in Battlefield 6, you don't have FSR 4. Uh, I'm pretty sure Radian will push an update soon. But again, FSR 4 is just compatible with the latest um, GPU from Radian. So if you want to use FSR 3, I really recommend to use XESS 2.1. It's a lot better uh, for an upscaling technique. So that's why you need to push that to your Battlefield. So now let's open the game. 
So now for the in-game settings. So first of all, uh, by just put performance and custom and we will, will customize everything. And after that, we're going to go back to graphic and advance a little bit later. So for the camera setting, and now it's a horizontal field of view. I think the latest one was vertical because I remember all the other battlefield that were using uh, vertical uh, FOV. So it changed now. It's a little bit like Call of Duty. So you can go until uh, 120. I like to play at 100. Uh, for like this and uh, you have to understand if you put a little bit more field of view you will have an impact on your fps world motion weapon motion blur everything at zero you want visibility camera shake same thing minimum disactivate chroma uh, chromatic aberration vignette and fair grain again for better visibility for the display section, I really recommend to go with full screen, less input lag, better FPS. Make sure that you're playing native with your resolution. Make sure that you have your max refresh rate activated and make sure that you don't use vertical sync. It will add input lag to your game. So now let's go with the graphic section over there in the modify section. So I'm going to show you right now just pure FPS and better visibility. So it's not about like good graphics it's about to seeing your enemy and to have a decent amount of fps so first of all texture quality texture filtering honestly those one you can max them out just look at your vram over there make sure that you have 10 percent empty so if you don't have a lot of vram you will need to lower a little bit those one after that mesh quality terrain quality undergrowth quality those one at low you can expect a nice six percent boost in your fps so it's not that bad Effect quality, this one is huge. I really recommend to go with low. Uh, you can have like some crazy drop in your FPS with this. So definitely go with low. Volumetric quality, this one with shadow is probably the parameter that will provide you the most of your FPS. If you compare ultra to low, you can expect a nice 12% boost. So this one is pretty huge. And also the game looks a little bit flat at low, but it's better to see enemy. Lighting quality, not a huge difference in your FPS, honestly, between low and high, but I feel like low is a little bit better for visibility, so that's why I'm using low. After that, those ones are really important, so local light and shadow quality, sun shadow quality and shadow filtering, everything at minimum, you can expect a nice 15% boost over there. Reflection quality, go with low, this one also can just randomly drop your FPS. Screen space reflection, go with off. Post process quality with low. Not a huge difference in your FPS, it's like 1% for each bracket, but honestly, the game looks very blurry at Ultra, I don't like that. So definitely go with low with this one. Screen place, uh, AO and GI go with off, a nice 4% boost. And the last one is pretty much CPU bounded, so go with medium. You can even try I if you want. Um, it's not that bad, but if you have a bad CPU, you, you, it will tank your FPS a lot. So now let's go back over here and go to the advanced section. So you have a couple of upscaling techniques. So first of all, um, don't touch your resolution scale. Uh, you will uh, use an upscaling technique. Frame limiter, if you don't use MS Afterburner uh, or NVIDIA app, Radiant app, um, you can lock your FPS with this if you want. If you have an NVIDIA card, definitely use the reflex low latency. So activate over there. And for upscaling techniques, so first of all, the best one in this game is DLSS 4. So if you have an RTX card, definitely go with DLSS and quality. Quality, you can expect 10% boost in your FPS. Balance also is pretty good. You can expect like 15% boost in your FPS. Uh, DLSS 4 at balance is better than DLSS 3 at quality. So that's why I still recommend it. If you have 1440p 4K, you can use balance. 1080p, honestly, use quality will be better. It's a bit blurry balance in 1080p. So... Uh, my recommendation is to use that. I'm not a big fan of frame generation or future frame rendering. It adds too much input lag in a game like this, so I don't recommend to use that. If you don't have um, an RTX card or you have a Radiant card, FSR right now, it's only FSR 3.1. You don't have FSR 4. Uh, I hope they're going to patch it and they're going to they're gonna release a driver um, for it. But the thing is, even if FSR 4 is available, it will not be available for if you have an older a GPU from Radian. So it's just for the latest generation. And uh, FSR 4 is almost on par with the LSS 4. So for sure, if you can use it, use it. But if you don't have that, I recommend to use XESS 2.1 with the latest version that I show you with uh, uh, the LSS Whopper because it's a lot better than FSR 3.1. Still blurry, still too much noise when you see fans, uh, foliage and stuff like that. So I recommend to go with XESS with this one at quality. You can also, you have other parameters like this. You have ultra quality. You can get like 2% boost max 
And Ultra Quality Plus is, is some kind of like native. You're going to lose like 8 to 10% in your FPS. So my recommendation is go with quality with this one. One more thing uh, in the graphics section, you have a section called sharpness. This one is question of preference, honestly. Um, if you feel that your game is too blurry, go higher. If you feel it's it looks too much like an Instagram filter, go lower. When I use upscaling technique, I like to play at like 65% like this. And uh, I feel like it's easier to see enemy and uh, it's not too blurry. So that's about it, guys, for my Battlefield 6 uh, guide. If you have any questions, just comment in the YouTube section. Post me your rig, CPU, GPU, and RAM. I will try to help you the best that I can. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Peace.